Hello, friends and colleagues. This is John Ross, president of the PA Principals Association. Thank you for joining me uh, this month. We have a special treat for the President's Corner. We actually have three guests who are joining us. Uh, this team from the Brandywine Heights Area School District did a fantastic presentation uh, last month at the PA Principals Conference, PA Lead 21. And uh, I thought it would be a good idea to bring them on and give them an opportunity to uh, share a little bit about what they're doing. Um, their focus is on smaller rural districts, but I think uh, a lot of what they touch on and kind of the vision behind what they do, uh, the continuity from school to school, is definitely something that will benefit any district. Um, but I want to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves, and, and then we're going to take a couple minutes just to talk about uh, the role that your school district plays, the role that your schools play, and, and how important they are uh, as a hub of activity um, in your school district. So why don't we work our way up. Let's start with the elementary school. Hi, I'm Stephanie Kelly. I'm the elementary principal uh, here at Brandywine Heights. Uh, my building consists of kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. We also house um, a Berks County Intermediate Unit Pre-K Counts program here as well, which we'll talk about having some additional transition opportunities with our pre-K students um, into the elementary. And again, as they go on to the intermediate school. Great. And I, I'm uh, Robert Trina. I'm the principal of the Brandywine Heights Intermediate Middle School. Uh, we are a school building that consists of grades fourth grade. Uh, so we have about 500 students. Uh, and technically, we are two schools under one roof, a uh, fourth and fifth grade intermediate school, and then a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade middle school. And the high school? Oh, I'm, I'm Matthew Jinich. I'm our high school principal. Uh, we have grades 9 through 12 here at Randy One Heights High School. We have about a, a 480 students um, finishing out our programs here, here at Randy One Heights. All right, so who wants to kind of lead off? Just talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the role that your schools play and maybe the genesis behind this whole idea of what you do of this shared vision, vision and continuity between your buildings. Sure. So, uh, as you know, we kind of alluded in our introductions, we are a small district. We have about uh, between 13 and 1400 students. Uh, we're really equidistant between the cities of Reading and Allentown. Uh, we're near Kutztown University, for anyone who's familiar with Kutztown. Uh, and, and we really are a hub of our community. Uh, we, we are in a small town at Topton. Uh, it has two big restaurants in it. They're both called Tony's. Uh, that's really not a joke. They are both called Tony's. Uh, but, you know, knowing that, that we are a small rural district, we, we know that, that our schools have to be a hub of our community, and we want our, our kids and our families to be involved, uh, and we want the school to always have opportunities for families to have safe and engaging, you know, activities and, and nights uh, to go around. And the, the cool thing with us as a principal team is we've all worked together uh, in some capacity. Uh, uh, Ms. Kelly and Mr. Jinich and I have been principal and assistant principals together. Uh, and you know we, we've now spread out across uh, the three buildings in our district, and we've we've always really had this um, kind of meshed idea of, of what a school should be, and not just your school, how each of the other schools in, in the district can really you know help with that vision. So you know as we we run all three buildings, as, as we work together for our students and our families and our teachers, we wanted to kind of have this shared vision and, and the shared belief structure that. If a student's in 11th grade or second grade, you know, it's the same concept of whatever grade that they're in. And I think if I could expand on that just for one second, it helps us work with our families because uh, they know that we have that approach about doing what's best for their students as they're going through, you know, even our kindergarten through 12th grade. So, um, you know, from a customer service standpoint for our, our families, uh, they know that once you're through elementary school, you're going to get that same approach in that intermediate middle school. And then even as we progress to the high school, even though a lot of those situations might change a little bit, that we're still going to be accessible as a principal team. We also try to include one another so that at least when the students are in the middle school, they know kind of who they're going to get to next. When they're in the elementary school, they know where they're going to go in, in intermediate middle. So I think it's helped kind of us develop a continuity uh, K-12 that's uh, pretty unique to our district. And you, you're, so you're the only three buildings in your district, the only three school buildings in your district, right? And uh, not all on the same campus, or are you? No, we're, we're separated. Uh, the elementary and the intermediate middle are across the street from each other. Uh, and the high school is about a mile to two miles from both of our schools. Okay, so um, 
let's start then by talking about the elementary and middle and just the things that you do to connect your two buildings specifically since you have that proximity thing. Are there things that you take advantage of because you have your buildings right next to one another? Yeah, so we, our uh, parent teacher committee, our PTC still operates K to five, even though we K to three here and four and five across the street. So Mr. Farina and I work very closely with a lot of our PTC events and, and fundraising events. Uh, we take turns um, hosting things like uh, Race for Education. Our students walk across the street for that fundraising event. Um, certain assemblies, we had a, a music in our schools assembly that we had the intermediate and or the intermediate students walk down to our gymnasium um, for that performance. A lot of the family nights um, that we have are just for, are, they're hosted by our K to five PTC, but they're family night events for K to twelve family. So anybody can come out to um, a movie night. Last uh, Friday we had our little shoppers village um, that we had. You know, Santa here. We had raffled off prizes, concession stands, and just. Uh, Princess here, things like that, or book fair. So we do the, not just the fundraising events, but we also um, have more structured partnerships between our students where World Read Aloud Day is something big that we do here where we connect um, grade levels together. So kindergarten and third grade are together, first and fourth, second and fifth, and they walk across the school and or walk across to each other's schools in a structured way. Um, to work with the other students, which is really cool. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, a lot of the genesis of where that came from was, I think back to my own uh, schooling and every year from K to eight, we visited the high school for something different. And I remember being an eighth grader and I was so excited that the next year I'd be going to this high school where I'd go on every year and, and got excited about going to it. And when we looked at this whole concept of elementary to intermediate middle, we wanted to do something similar. We wanted to give our elementary students a chance to come up and visit, uh, you know, where, where they'll be going with their fourth and fifth graders. And then give our fourth and fifth graders a chance then to come back, you know, and see the elementary school, to, to see their old teachers. Uh, we, we've been very fortunate in our district over the past few years, we've done a number of construction projects. So the elementary school has an addition uh, and a new facelift. We, we've done some uh, facelifting here at my school as well. So it's, it's neat for the students you know, to come and see, you know, uh, go back and see their second grade teacher and work with second grade students or come up and see where they'll be when they're fourth graders. And that's, as Miss Kelly alluded to, that that World Read Aloud Day uh, is one of those vehicles that we use that. And we're looking to expand that this year uh, in, into a Pi Day, uh, where very similar concept to World Read Aloud Day, uh, but we're working through with math. Uh, and, and, you know, as, as we all know, with the challenges of the, the COVID pandemic, uh, a lot of those things had to be backburnered for a little bit of time, but you know, we're excited to, to be able to do those things safely again this year and, and have students visit the other campuses and you know, see their old teachers or, or what have you. Okay, so then the kids get to you for the middle intermediate experience. Now, what kinds of things do you do to connect your building to the high school? So, you know, it's, it's a really neat thing that, that we have uh, being that you know, we, we get to see these students because we are so small that, you know, maybe are struggling during their middle school years or having challenges in their middle school years. And then we know, man, this student gets to 10th grade, whether, you know, they're in college prep courses or they're uh, in our, uh, uh, it's called BCTC or Berks County Technical College. They've really turned things around and they're, and they're doing, they're doing excellently. And, and one of the things that we've talked about uh, is this mentorship program where we match middle school students up with high school students who have similar interests. And the high school students we pick are not always your, your, your students who have always excelled in middle school. They were the kids who may have had some struggles themselves and through you know, grit and resilience and tenacity came through it. And we partner them up and they do very specific activities throughout the school year. And what we always try to do is make sure that when that middle school student does matriculate up to the high school, their high school mentor is still there. So, you know, we'll hook a sixth grader up with a ninth grader. So when they're in ninth grade, that student's still a high school student. So it's somebody that, you know, he or she knows uh, when they're up at the high school. And we've also uh, parlayed that into an after school program. Uh, we have uh, two great high school, I'm sorry, three great high school teachers who come down uh, and, and run a free after school program for sixth to eighth graders. Uh, so the National Honor Society students and the Students Against the Decisions, they come down, uh, they help students with work, they tutor, they do uh, learning activities with them as well. So it gives our kids a chance to, you know, meet some of the high school staff and again, work, work with some of the high school students. 
Uh, and then it's really neat, you know, when those students go to the high school, they come back and they volunteer at that Y program. So uh, again, a lot of opportunities that we, we want our kids to be excited to go up to the high school uh, when it's there. I was gonna say, I think, I think that gives me a great opportunity at the high school level to take uh, sometimes we don't always get that excitement that you get from elementary to intermediate or intermediate to middle. So what I've really tried to do is create um, opportunity around that excitement or leverage that excitement and opportunity where now my students who have to complete um, a mandatory 25 hours of graduation service to, to meet their graduation, I'm sorry, community service to meet their graduation uh, requirements, they now have an opportunity to go back down and assist. So we turn that into different opportunities uh, for those students. So I have some students who want to volunteer at the after school program at the middle level. I have some students who want to go down to the elementary level and uh, assist with some of the, the after school reading programs. Um, we have a high school key club that wants to do community service so that they can go and assist with some families. So it really kind of helps us, especially with a smaller population, to really start tailoring some opportunities. Uh, where even now we have a pretty Obviously, again, you know, the, the challenges of the pandemic kind of made it difficult, but uh, we have a pretty robust internship program. And now we can provide our students internships in alternative buildings if they want to, whether it's to get exposure in education, uh, exposure in teaching, or even if they want to use some of what they're doing, um, maybe even a business internship to come and assist even in those other buildings. So between the mentorship and then those opportunities to kind of connect my kids back with the it really does help give us a good kind of cyclical approach to uh, to giving back to the community here. So a lot of what you talked about are they're great ideas, and but they're natural transitions, right? Elementary to intermediate to middle to high school all makes sense. That flowing in that direction. I'm really interested to hear about this big jump that you take from these little elementary school kids working with high school kids or being around high school kids. So talk to me a little bit about how that works because y'all aren't even on the same campus, right? So you're not, you know, it's not like you've got an elementary school right next to the high school and it's, it makes sense to have that back and forth going on. But uh, Stephanie, you're bringing your kids up to see some things that are happening at the high school. They're getting to see high school stuff. So we don't have an auditorium in, even though we've got a beautiful renovation, renovated building here, we do not have an auditorium. So our kindergarten through third grade students put on night of music performances or their kinder concert, um, and they'll do their rehearsals up at the high school. Um, we've in the past had educational showcase day too, where um, at K to 12, just highlighting all of the cool things that are going on by grade level. That's another opportunity for them to go to the high school. We do Halloween town. Um, where our elementary kids go through the, the high school, um, the high school student council, I believe, is the one that hosts uh, Halloween Town. Um, so there's a lot of night events that happen at the high school. Uh, our sports booster clubs put on different fundraisers. Most of the times are, are up at the high school. Uh, using the fields at different buildings for our youth organizations is, is something that's another uh, shared, shared thing. That's we don't go over there as often, but we, I feel like we still get a, a lot of, not during the school day, but there's a lot of opportunities for our students outside of the school day um, that are really exciting events that are really well attended by our elementary students. Um, yeah, but I think the community assists in that too, because they do have that opportunity for youth sports. Uh, as Mr. Farina referenced earlier in terms of that help of the community, our, our kids are all in one another's buildings all the time, whether it's for a wrestling practice or a basketball tournament where you have your scout meetings. It happens in one of three places because there's so few other places for, for the kids to go. So I feel like it kind of eliminates some of those walls. I mean, most, most kids, by the time they get to my building, it's not the largest one in the district, but they've at least been in and around most of it, where really the only thing I'm introducing them to is the second floor, because they've been on the first floor and in the gym and in the cafeteria uh, for some community events. Even our, sub our summer camp uh, last year, Camp Spark was held at the high school too, so the students were really excited to be up there. Um, one of the exciting things that is new this year, um, Mr. Ginich's students, a couple of them came down to meet with me last week or the week before. To, uh, they're working on putting together a play proposal to recruit students to put on a play. They are organizing it. They have the scripts. They're going to be working after school. Um, they'll be doing their rehearsals in this building. But again, that will be another opportunity. They'll be putting on that performance up at the high school on the big stage. Um, and that's just an after school uh, just project that 
a couple kids wanted to come down and get in, get done. So I know, and you alluded to it, I know the, the younger age teachers love seeing the older kids come back, right? They get a big kick out of seeing these kids. And you all even talked about it before we started the recording here about, you know, how kids change and that, that opportunity to see them after they've been through your school. I'm curious, and this, this is a, a surprise question, but I'm kind of thinking about it as you're talking. I'm curious about the impact on your staff. Have you noticed any impact, for instance, I'm, I'm the first one to say elementary teachers are the most underpaid profession in the United States of America. Like what elementary teachers do during a school day just blows out of the water, in my opinion, any other level, what they have to deal with. Do, do the high school teachers get a taste for what it's like in the elementary world being around those elementary kids or any impact like that on your staff where they gain an appreciation for what people at the other levels are doing? definitely feel that, that that appreciation is there when they have the access to the students. I think that it's it's always couched a little bit differently because staff students get to leave my building and are not with me all the time. So while they might be, while they might be, you know, cute for that day, it's not the other 179. Just like I know sometimes the perception is when you're, you know, dealing with teenagers that sometimes they're a little bit moody and we have our days up here as well. Uh, and we always make jokes between the three of us just about how how different our days might be. But, you know, in the same, they can be collectively chaotic. But I think that that exposure and again, being a small community, I think kind of umbrellas over a lot of what we do here because the, the, the teachers can remember that they know how many you know, students have been through. And even now, just in, in our tenure, um, you know, Steph, I think last year you had said your, your second graders are the ones to be graduating this year. So we have a, we have a pretty big breadth now that we've, we've dealt with. Um, all of the students in our district in some capacity or another. And I, I think it's, it's neat too, because uh, I think one of the really cool events between the high school and the elementary school is uh, the, the graduation practice and walkthrough. Uh, so the, the graduating seniors go down, they do their graduation practice at the elementary school, and then they walk through the elementary school and, and then they come up and walk through the intermediate middle school. And it's so neat seeing all of their teachers through all the years saying, oh my gosh, I remember when you were this big and you know, all, do you remember when this happened and all, you know, all these funny things and, you know, it's just a really great chance for the little kids to see, wow, one day this is going to be me graduating, walking through here with this cap and gown and, you know, the teachers say, oh my gosh, I remember when this kid was in my, my, you know, class. And I think with, with my building too, it, it's something where, you know, we see a lot with the staff being that, you know, I have staff who teaches fourth graders and staff who teach eighth graders. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the eighth grade teacher go down and, and talk to a fourth grade teacher about a specific student be, you know, amazed at the, the progress they've made. I think, you know, that some of our low incidence populations and some of our, you know, students who have challenges through the day that, you know, for me, it's great to see, wow, I remember when they came here as a fourth grader and the struggles they faced and now, you know, how great they're doing as they get ready to go off to the high school. So I think that really is, you know, one of the, the neat uh, parts about being in a small school district is that even if you didn't have this student, as a, as a, as a, in your class, you still know them from the hallways. You still you have seen them at recess and you, you're, you're, you know them and you may know their siblings. And it's, it's, it's really a cool, really cool part of what we do. So uh, anybody watching this obviously can glean from just the things that you shared in the 10 minutes we've been talking about, you know, the benefits just, we could spend another 20, 30 minutes just talking about how it's helped your schools and your staff and your community. Um, but, let, let's wrap up just by talking to, talking to people that are kind of at the ground level, you know, people maybe newer to a district or just kind of reaching the point where they're thinking, okay, you know, I'm, I'm the elementary school principal in my district and it's pretty similar, pretty small. And I'd, I'd like to, you know, do some more things with the middle school and high school. What tips, what advice, what potholes and speed bumps to worry about? Like, what, what do you think uh, people should be aware of if they're going to try to incorporate things like this? I, I, I think the, the, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Matt. I was just, just going to say, I think for, for me, I'm thinking most base ground level, one of the, the biggest pieces of, uh, I think, any success we have here is attributed to the, the fact that we do have that working relationship as, a, as an administrative team and as a principal team, where not only can we communicate effectively, which is big when you're planning these events logistically, sometimes across uh, two or three buildings, or in the case of a high school, or if I'm going to transport 
or my kids are going to drive themselves over to the middle school or, or uh, elementary school, things we just want to make sure we can communicate through, but also kind of help us develop that professional relationship where now we can look at those things through one another's perspectives, where if I'm going to go ahead and open my building up to the elementary or to the middle, I also want to make sure that I'm thinking about what that's going to be like for my elementary and intermediate middle counterparts, because it's, it's not as easy sometimes the minute that age group shifts or changes. I think that just from a, from a base level, the communication and just that administrative relationship we have kind of helps the foundation for everything we want to do. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, I, I really think it's important to, to start small. Uh, we, we've developed this over some capacity over the last seven years. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's important to start with, you know, find one activity to do between the elementary and the middle school and one activity to do between the middle school and the high school, start there, start with one thing and then, you know, build out from there. And, and I think when you do that, it allows you to get that foothold underneath you that Matt was talking about. Uh, and, and you can start with, you know, some, some neat activities. And I think it's neat to, to really empower your teachers. Uh, I, I know this year I was speaking with, I believe a kindergarten teacher and, and part of our renovation is uh, we have a brand new STEM lab. Uh, so, so we took a large, uh, area in our school and turned into this very innovative space. And, and when she was up, you know, viewing that space, she was like, oh my gosh, I would love to bring all of kindergarten up here to see what you guys are doing with drones and robot or robotics and, you know, coding and everything like that. So we said, oh, all right, this might be another area where kindergarten comes up over a day or come up over the period of a day and they, they visit our STEM lab and they watch our students flying drones and all of those neat things. So, you know, really kind of empower your staff. And I think that's a, a neat thing that we've seen is, you know, our, our teachers don't view this as, oh man, I'm a, I might lose a day of instruction by doing this. They, they wholly see, you know, the value in uh, working with other grade levels and working with other teams. Or just to have those ideas, again, to, to expose the kids to the, the different opportunities um, educationally. I think, you know, we have a phenomenal staff here who have thought of different ways to involve the kids into the district, which is, which is the important piece. Good stuff. Um, so uh, any final thoughts before I wrap it up? Anything we uh, just, cover? Just, a, just a big thank you to you, Dr. Ross. Uh, we, we really appreciate you uh, spotlighting us and, and giving us an opportunity to, to, to talk about what we do. And, you know, as we kind of talked before we started our, our program that I think there are a lot of school districts in the Commonwealth who are very similar uh, to, to our demographic. Uh, and, and it's neat to you know, see some of these things come to fruition. And I just hope whatever we, we do uh, or whatever we, we've shared with you is, is helpful. Uh, and you know, if you wouldn't mind sharing all of our contact information with, with everybody who hopefully yeah. has watched to this point, you know, we'd be happy to, 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 to chat with any teams. Yeah, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll, I'll add a slide maybe at the end that has your names and your email addresses. Um, but for some reason, my technology skills aren't up to the task for that. Uh, it's Brandywine Heights Area School District. So if you just Google search, I'm sure you can find their webpage and their email contacts. And, and Rob, yeah, I mean, right on point. One of the things I love about Pennsylvania uh, is the variety, you know, the, the urban to rural and everything in between. And uh, as somebody who works in a district with 13,000 plus kids and 16 schools, 80 square miles uh, where I am to hear about things like this. This is one of the things that's just, uh, I, I think the strength of rural schools is the ability to do things like this. That is a little bit more of a struggle in larger districts because once, as we all know, once you get more chiefs working all in the same area, uh, everybody has their uh, opinion on things and, and it becomes a little bit more of a power struggle. So. It's uh, awesome to see people working collegially as the three of you are. And uh, kudos to you for doing that for your kids and for your community. I'm sure they really, really appreciate it. So thanks for taking the time to join me this morning. And again, thanks, Rob Farina, Matt Janich, Stephanie Kelly, uh, Brandywine Heights Area School District. Keep up the great work. And that'll do it for this edition of the President's Vlog. Please join us next month. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the PA Principals YouTube page. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs>